Hi there, Renty Green here. Today I am going to instruct you in how to deal with doubt. One of the first classical mistakes that we do in our awakening process. Well, in a way it's not really a mistake, but you know fancy titles. But this is the first one that we will encounter the most. And I have got a little uh, exercise that you can do to deal with your doubt. Because doubt often comes in when we are trying to activate our higher order energy system. And we do that by building the bridge between the three lower fields, which we will clear and transform. And by that, adapt our three lower fields to be able to merge with the higher order energy system. And that's where doubt comes in. It is a kind of a blocking, a kind of prohibiting technology that is put there to make us shy away or go away from our abilities to reach the high order energy system. So first things first, find a chair, sit down and relax. I will instruct you in the following sequence in how to do this. And it's not something that demands a lot. It's not about lighting up candles, putting on soft music and sit in some preferred position or get ready using all sorts of mental exercises. This is literally something you can do when you're out walking, when you are out and about and when you're at home thinking about something. And a little trick here, part of the process of merging the higher and lower water fields are to learn to not think that much overthink things, be in the processes of the mental network, but learn to shut that down and silence it. And that's why meditation comes in. So the following sequence is based upon meditation techniques, but also visualization techniques. And with that, let us begin. All right, let us begin. I suggest you sit in a chair and sit with an upright back or if you can't do that, then prop it up with pillows so that your back is supported. Place both of your feet on the floor so you can feel the floorboards or whatever you have got your feet on. If you're out in nature, then you feel the sand or the ground or the soil or whatever you're touching. Or if need be, just feel how your feet are in their shoes. Or if no shoes on, how does your feet feel with no shoes on. So this first step is to learn to observe your body and connect to your body. When we connect to our body, we suddenly realize that we are more than just our heads. And doubt has a tendency to spring to life from thought processes. So it is in many ways um, a process that ignites in the brain. With that, we also uh, can connect it to the understanding that doubt is part of some of the fifth dimensional cubes that are inserted into not as much anymore, but the older version or the old version of the frequency fence. We know it has been modified. We know it's now something entirely else. And it runs on what we call more updated types of alien technology. But we are aware that it connects to our brain. And there are deeper exercises that we can do once we have learned to administer the bodily processes of doubt. So we understand that doubt begins with our thought forms. Hence, the importance of learning to meditate and silence the inner voice and the inner chatter. There are so much information out there you can dive into. And I will give you my version of meditation at some point. But right now, we're dealing with doubt. So the first exercise here is to sit and feel your body. Transfer your observance point from the brain and your brain processes into your body. And that's what we will begin with. Because once we are observant of what's going on in our neural network, and that is what most people perceive as your thinking processes, then it's also easy to shut it off. So we need to be observant of these parts of our body first. So we have three parts. We have thought forms and thought processes that goes with our brain and neural network. It's based upon electrochemical energies. And we have got what we could call body sensations, which most interpret as emotions. These are electrochemical processes that respond to the thought processes. 
I know cognitive sciences says, is it really the emotions that spark to life thought forms or is it thought forms that sparks emotional processes to life? Depends on where the energy that sparks the neurochemicals into action. <clears throat> so if the um, igniter is outer environment type of um, interference from other people or something that's happening outside of physical form, yes, then the peripheral nervous system kicks in and ignites the electrochemical processes that then goes up to the brain to try and find solutions to the outer quote-unquote threat or incident that's happening. But when we talk about doubt, then that relies on our neural Uh, patterns that we have built up throughout our lifetimes and sometimes also into past lifetimes. So that's internal. That's completely relying on the internal processes of the brain. So that we don't need an outer igniter. In many ways, when I hear talk about doubt, of course you can have doubt. Should I go left or should I go right? Uh, what's the right move to do right now? What is the right choice in terms of job or career or family or whatever? And that's, of course, related to outer dynamics. But the exercise I'm giving you here can be used as well because these processes where you need to make a choice are also nested in what we could say prior dynamics and prior ways of how you go about yourself, how you perceive yourself, and how you perceive life. So when we talk about doubt, we are really going into a deep psychological structure and a deep psychological purge of your neural network as well as your emotional system. As you learn in the whole transition sciences as well as some of the free material I've got on the whole academy, is that the emotions are often solidified in our emotional field in what's called emotional patterns. And these nest upon our previous actions and our the, the both our inner responses, but also the responses from the outer circumstances of how our choice and how we were in that moment has affected others and how that responded reflected energy back to us. With that, you begin to understand that doubt is not just doubt. It's not just something, ah, stop doubt. It is a little bit deeper process. And this is what this little exercise will assist you with, where I will give you some ideas of how to um, process some of these physical, emotional, and mental processes and learn to be aware of them. Because the awakening process is not just about awakening up to so-and-so and the world is so-and-so, because in a way that all is rested upon your perception of reality and what kind of frames of references you're operating from. So different belief systems creates different thought forms, creates different types of neural network processes, creates different types of electrochemical processes, aka emotions, and creates different types of physicality, as in what type of code that our biofield will be influenced with when we are thinking and feeling the way that we are doing. Now, this is not the trap, and I'm here calling it a trap, where you think that everything is psychosomatic, and that means that the psyche, your emotions and mental processes are connected to your physical form, because that is a fact. But when we talk illness, and when we talk Uh, different forms of diseases, there are more to it than just that. So that's the trap. Because some people say all illness is a psychosomatic and only if you change the way you think and the way you feel, then you won't have that illness. And and nothing in reality is that simple. Everything is almost always much more complex. But it does ignite certain patterns in our emotional, mental and biofields that if there are karmic imprints or if there are what we could call genetic inheritance of certain weaknesses in the human genome that often are connected with karmic events and past lives and some of the circumstances that we have been on. So it's both about the inner environment, but it's also about inheritance. It's also about genetic markers. And it's also about environmental issues, such as lifestyle and how we eat and how well we take care of ourselves, how stressed we get, how well we are to cope and heal because the bodies are different. 
Some bodies heal better than others. So there's a lot of individualistic traits in this. So that's why it's not the simple answer is if only you think this way and feel this way, then you can hack your biogenome and then you can hack illness. This is, this is not what I'm, to, this is not where I'm talking from, but it all plays in. But that's a pattern. And if we begin learning with these, working with these patterns and learn to work with these patterns, we are 10% of the way. So let us begin with, say, learning how to work with our emotional mental patterns and understand how they actually affect our biofield and our physical form. Then we are 10% of the way into a better uh, lifestyle as well as a better way of functioning in life and functioning within reality as we know of it. Okay, so you have positioned yourself in a comfortable chair. You have a straight back. And just to put in here, the ability to continue to sit with a straight back rests upon your stomach muscles. So if you feel that this is too difficult, then it's time to do the plank. Minimum 25 a day. That will help you with your stomach muscles so that you will be able to sit with a straight back. So feet on the ground and you, your knees should be, you can sit in lotus position if that's a good position for you. Or you can sit with just what we could call um, a 90 degree angle on your knees and legs. So they've your feet on the ground, your butt in the chair, your back straight, and your head should be kind of not falling forwards or falling backwards. But if you know you will fall asleep, then position yourself in a way so that you can rest your head. But this is not going to be a long exercise. This is not 20 minutes exercise. This will be an exercise you can learn to do in two or three minutes, and then you get the answer straight away. But of course, we have to practice first. So part of the practice will be to get into the root of doubt as quickly as possible. And how do we do that? Let's first try and define what is doubt. And remember, I'm a psychotherapist. So this is the way I work with doubt. This is the way I have through my many years of working with people as well as my own 20 years plus of inner work as well as uh, the years, uh, the, the five to six years, because that's kind of what it amounted to where I worked as a healer where I combine psychotherapy along with inner work, along with healing sequences until what we could say reality got shifted into the event program in 2017. And whatever I began to encounter in my healing processes was not as much my client, but more interference and other dimensional beings. And at that point, I felt that it began to be a little bit too muddy. The waters were too muddy to figure out in the discernment process of what was benevolent and what was not benevolent. And I have decided to shut down my healing practice until further notice, until we know what reality is about and how the event program has affected our reality and how it has affected us and what the bigger plans are with the solar transition. And you know, that's what we will embark on from 2025 until 2034. And I've got material out on that process as well. Okay, so we now know that dealing with doubt is not just a simple thing as in pushing it away, suppressing it and say, Psh, go away with you. It is nested into some emotional patterns. It is nested into specific types of mind processes, and it is part of prohibited technology. So we thereby understand that our inner work here is where we need to work our way through layers of deception, layers of distortion. The emotional patterns, mental patterns, and mind processes are, in essence, energetic distortion. It's put there to prevent us from getting into that purity rate and that high viability rate of our emotional field that allows us to activate our heart field and activate the true neural network that's based upon six structural layers. I teach this in the transition sciences from where we can reconnect to the six dimensions that are the foundation of our multidimensional uh, energy system that is the type of energy system that all beings that are in our solar system and used to be in our solar system on what we could call legit, correct, 
terms under the councils who would have the six dimensions as their foundation. So that's what the foundational fields are in uh, uh, the solar system, holographic energetic structure, if you choose to come to existence inside our solar system. This has been tampered with, of course. Um, these dynamics of the, the original solar system, energy system, the holographic energetic architecture, I also teach in the transition sciences. Whereas uh, in, in uh, comparison to many other types of teachings that are out there, there are either the old spiritual teaching systems that are connected to some of the groups that left Atlantis, or they are part of the, the new type of fifth dimensional energy system under some of the incoming other terrestrial races that are not originally part of our solar system, hence offers teachings that are dissimilar. I come from this solar system. I was part of the original projects of this solar system. So hence, of course, I teach the, the aspects of what it means to be a solar system human and not a humanoid from a parallel universal matrix or from another constellation or from another system that is adjacent to our solar system. Okay, so there we kind of straight off a little bit again uh, into some other ideas. That is also part of it where we understand and observe that energy work and inner work is rooted in complex layers of information as well as complex layers of inner work that are tied to different layers or densities, vibrational states and energy states of both our inner energy system, but also part of reality. So reality and us are interconnected via our subtle body and our energy fields that are built up in different layers, hence the multidimensionality. But each layer has its own challenges that we are to master, so to speak, that we are to learn to work with. By via these different aspects of the different layers, we can learn to perceive reality in a different manner and by that dig deeper into our awakening process and learn to multidimensionally interact with the different types of energies and code systems of the different fields of the different realities we connect to and by that build the complexity rate of our holographic energetic architecture and by that gain our original consciousness potentials. And what are we to use these for? Well, some call it enlightenment. I call it reaching our fuel, fueled and full progression potentials from where we can actively become and regain our abilities as an advanced solar system civilization from where we can lift ourselves up and become equals with all of the other groups that are in our solar system as well as around us, because that's the goal for me. My goal is not to sit in some kind of samadhi bliss state and be present there all the time. I did that 10 years ago and it's beautiful and it's definitely a process where you clear your emotional field into the purity rate and in that, that feeling of calm and bliss will arise from the purity processes. But that's, that own, that's only part of it. I can go into that at any time I like. And sometimes that's good. That's good when we talk self-nurture and we talk the healing potentialities of your biofield. That's where samadhi really kicks in, especially if you are a person that has tendencies to be stressed. Then samadhi, which is kind of a subtle, golden, caring, compassionate, beautiful, beautiful energy will come in and soothe your entire body, make it relax and make you feel comfortable in the world. And that's a really, really good place to be. But when we talk doubt, then that's an active potential. That's an active type of energy that we use if we are in doubt with a choice. And I will here work with, should I do A or should I do B? As in doubt, with a choice, because doubt is often connected to a choice. Why are choices important? They are important because choices are connected to our quote-unquote karma. They are connected to the way we utilize energy. Karma is the way you utilize energy, both of your own fields, but also of the reality that your fields connect to. So if your fields are highly distorted, your fields will connect to the distortion planes and everything you will be pulling into your inner work and your inner perception will be distortion energies. That's what I typically call astral energies. You will see all sorts of fanciful fantasy beings, guides, 
fairy beings, all the things that are myths and stories of the New Age is littered with all sorts of beautiful paintings have come out of this, all sorts of very, very beautiful beings. These are, as I see it, genetic leftovers from some of the different groups that have been here. They have left behind, instead of, for instance, when you clear out your energy field, you could do it in different ways. But one way is to shut it completely down and then just leave the shells with some genetic remains in the distortion fields. And these will eventually, as they connect to different humans, begin to take form from this. They are technically energetic parasites. And with that, begin to create holograms that they know the receiver will be um, boosted by. Uh, Carl Gustav Jung called it this inflation of some of the arch archetypes that are in the collective field. So that's another way of saying the exact same thing. So for me, and that's a whole other level of information that is also important when we talk about the activation processes. I do not talk about archetypes and these energetic parasites in this way in the transition sciences. There I'm more, more connect to the ones that are linked up to some of the original um, uh, colonizers and their networks, how the, which has been part of the astral barrier controlling our emotional field via their prohibiting technology. So it's a little bit different approach. But the astral plane is connected to the first steps of our awakening process. And that's why I touch ground with it here and do it for free. And then the higher levels that will clear your fourth dimensional field are in the transition sciences. But here we can, because I already in the High Awareness Lifestyle YouTube channel, I have already there talked so much about the different processes that are connected to the three lower fields, either through Buddhism or the ideas of the Buddha or and the later uh, interpreter, interpreters of that, as well as the chakra system and the later interpreters of that and other uh, ways that you can go about it. I will put a link below uh, to that YouTube channel where you can go through and hear some of my ideas that are often uh, connected to spirituality and the typical approach to the inner work, which is not what I am working with here. We are at the next step of this. Okay, so you are now positioned in a good position in your chair and you have listened to my voice to these uh, levels of information. And I suggest you listen to that again, write it down, and then use that as contemplation material in some of your inner work, where you can use it in meditation. There are meditation practices, and there are contemplation practices where you learn something about a topic by focusing on it in meditation, and by that asking the question and investigate it in meditation, where you will then scout your fields for information, and with with that question and with that investigation, draw up distortion energies from your emotional mental fields, as well as perhaps learn insights from the collective fields that are connected to that question, at least until you have cleared these levels from you. And then you can begin to ask your original energy system for information regarding this. And of course, that goes with the multidimensional knowledge that are connected to the original reality fields and not the Truman Show that we are part of. So the first takeaway in this bit of this little podcast, which is going to be an extensive one, uh, apparently, is that each layer of information is connected to specific layers in your three lower fields that are part of distortion layers. That's a very, very important thing to have in mind to begin with, that what will come to you will most likely be distortion. The second important thing is to understand that these distortions must be cleared for you to access the true knowledge that you have in your high order energy system. The true knowledge is not linked up to entities. It is not linked up to visual content. It is linked up to instant knowledge of how things work. You can then switch on your higher order network that taps into the holographic teaching system and there get the explanations that are deeper into the understanding of what it is that you are seeing. Now, you have positioned yourself upright in a chair, and I suggest you close your eyes, but you can keep them open. You don't have to close your eyes. Sometimes it's easier when we close our eyes because then we do not have visual content that are igniting the brain and the brain processes. So the first step in Doubt. You have doubt. You want to make a choice. Do you? Should you 
do choice A or should you do choice B? Or you are doubting your own abilities to do the inner work. These are two different forms of doubt that often come in the way. So let us first work with the insecurity. Can you do this work? Should you do this work? What does this work imply? Where does it take you? What is it all about? And this doubt is often connected to fear. So it's the fear of the unknown. And we recall and understand that the body and the emotions and the mental fields in many ways are engineered to protect you, as in kind of what is protection when it all comes down to it. Is protection a kind of mechanism that actually keeps you in your comfort zone? Or is it a protection that preserves your high order energies? And I will here challenge you and say, well, it is a protection mechanism that is put there to block you from leaving the Truman Show. So the state of fear, the fear of the unknown, the fear of what this is, is not only what we could say primal fear due to past life experiences of when we have tried to do this before, because those of us who are activating in this life, we have tried it many, many times before. So our level of fear when it comes to the inner work is often heightened compared to others that are not interested in the inner work, or that is just doing meditation because it makes them feel good, or whatever the reasons are. I can't speak on behalf of these, but I can speak on behalf of those of us who are part of the original solar system civilizations or those of you who were brought here from other systems and what you're struggling with, the level of fear you have, the fear of being encaptured somewhere else and brought here and enslaved, or the fear of those of us who were here to begin with experience the different wars of our solar system and then seeing ourselves being colonized and with that got enslaved and put into oblivion. So fear, the primal fear in the inner work and the activation work is nested upon our own ancient history more than anything else. That fear, of course, ripples from our higher order energy system into our lower order energy system and is amplified by different forms of prohibited technology, as well as the different energetic parasites that are nesting and have created a nest inside our emotional patterns, feeding our emotional field with different types of electrochemical processes. I talk about that in the transition sciences and in the advanced clearing work course material I have produced where I explain the sciences behind this. So we are in what we could say, it's, it's not just psychological when we have doubt. We see it as a defense mechanism. That's the first most important thing. And the reason why I want you to point your attention to that doubt is a defense mechanism as much as it is a shutdown mechanism is so you understand the two legs of doubt. It is based upon fear and it's also put there to prevent you from accessing your higher order capacities. And here we're talking about your original consciousness potentials. So doubt is a neat thing. And you will discover once you have learned to deal with doubt, you will get other uh, influences of what I call the 70s, the different types of uh, artificial mental type of cube technology that downloads thought forms into our minds that pushes us into specific emotional processes. And one of them is doubt, and there is dissolution, and there is depression. Just to mention three of them, I explain that in my material on In the Whole Academy. So you can get more of these cube technologies and how they operate. Of course, I'm not going into detail of the cube technology. I could do that at some later point. But in the advanced energy work, I talk about the effects it has on us, which is more important than how this technology is built up. 
first and foremost, because the way that these cubes work, they work on holographic energetic principles, they are built upon code systems, and they are in alignment with different types of genetic structures that activate specific, specific type of gene code sequences that allows for specific type of energy patterns, specific types of thought forms, and specific type of energetic uh, parasitic build-up mechanisms, as well as specific type of influential patterns that comes from different types of distortion realms that by that creates the distortion energies in us. So now you begin to see that what we're doing here is a little bit more complex than just psychology and just the standard compassion work. We need the sciences and the understanding of the technologies to reach our full potential. So we know what we are up against. Okay, and then the clever ones of you will say, how do we deal with this technology? I explained some of this in the Advanced Energy Work courses, how these technologies, since they are holographic energetic, and once we reach our holographic energetic architecture, then we are on the same level, and then one plus one will be a, an enabling us to work with the opposition dynamics as well as the polarity forces that are part of our solar system. That is technically the quote-unquote cross on which we are crucified, as it's said in the esoteric teachings. Okay, so we are now having with the first part of it that goes with fear. And that, to be able to work with that, we need to understand where that fear comes from. For me, the fear came from whether these are actual past memories or inserted programs creating false memories of past lives. The moment I began to work with my heart field, that is the vibrational field that is connected to the thymus, and it is positioned there, and that is where you will put your double hand position. Um, that little um, position with the double hands, I explained that in the free material uh, on the whole Academy um, website, as well as in my class material. But you literally just put your right and left hand on top of the thymus in the position that makes you feel most comfortable. There are different ways you can position them uh, with the right hand on top and the left hand in the bottom, or the left hand on top and the right hand in the bottom, or on top of each other, or in alignment with each other. This is for you to experiment with. The way you put your right and left hand on your heart field that is on top of your thymus or the breastbone, is what makes you feel calm and comfortable. That's your position. What makes you feel calm and comfortable? Because fear can only be countered by feeling calm and comfortable. You can still feel fear in your body. And today is a good day for me to do it because I am in Sarasota Springs in Florida and the wind is blowing outside and I can feel the collective fear of the weather being hostile as in perhaps is this leading to a hurricane? Is this leading to floods? So I feel the fear. I've felt the need to go out for a walk. The moment I opened the door, I felt this collective, no, don't go out. This is not a day to go out. So I stay indoor. But I feel the fear. I just tapped into it. So I feel it. And that's collective fear. So there's also a level of collective fear that affects us. There's the individual fear fear, and the collective fear. And you say, why do I need to know all this? I just want to deal with my doubt. Well, these dynamics of doubt are rooted into these different layers. And that's why when we do our inner work and our clearing work, once we understand the many layers that our emotions are connected to, then we also begin to understand that the inner work and the activation and awakening process is something that will take time. That's why patience comes in and why we can't be over eager and just push through thinking, this is just me creating this thought form or creating this affirmation or doing that exercise and then I'm good to go. That's not how it works in my opinion. This is where we work through 15,000 years of oblivion. So that's a bit of a different job. That's, that's a whole other level of inner work. And we embark on this, those of us who have tried again and again and again, especially those of us that are part of the original solar system. Because we know we are the first one that we are the first that should be the last we need to activate. 
because we are connected to the solar system. We are the ones that were part of building it and part of making it function the way that it did before the takeover. And the big um, history behind that is not where we need to go today because many mistakes were made and it's not a clear, simple, this is what happens because history is always much more complicated than what we want to think, as with everything in life. So I feel the collective fear and I'm blocking that out and literally putting my hand up and saying, no, that's not my fear today. That's not where I want to work. But it's good that it pointed its um, little ugly head my way because then I had the attention of it and saying, no, that's not my fear. But it kind of creates a heightening of my own fear, to put it that way. And my own fear was, of course, not of course, but due to either inserts or actual past life memories, uh, the fear of prosecution in various forms over various ages. Um, as far back as I remember, there are always this trial, prosecution, and some kind of horrible punishment that is built into my neural network, my emotional field, and my biofield. And that's a shutdown mechanism, which, of course, I am working with. And even though I get one level, there is another and another and another because these emotional patterns are very complex. They're like kaleidoscopic patterns that once you get one nodal point in the pattern, it begins to unravel the others. And that's the process. It's about unraveling all the most important root causes that creates the pattern. And once you get these, sometimes there are two, sometimes there are hundreds. Once you get these, then the pattern will dissolve. The energetic parasite will no longer have a nest and you can reach the technology and the elemental beings that are connected to that energy pattern. And by that, begin to clear out the electrochemical processes and the thought forms that are connected to that specific way of thinking, that specific way of feeling, and that specific way of responding to certain situations in your everyday life and what you see and feel to be the root cause of the process that you're currently in.